This is Brother Barnes, and let's do a plot for density of water. Let's gather the data, and let's plot it on the graph, and then let's calculate the slope. Let's do all of that. That's, that's going to get crazy, but good. Let's take a look at it. Let's make a, a y-axis here. And then, how about, let's make an x-axis right here. Let's do that. How about that? Let's call that x. And let's call this right here y. And I'm going to mark on, on the centimeters here to four, six, eight, ten. I know how much my data is going to fill this page. We want to have graphs that are nice and spacious and this one in fact is not going to fill up the whole page. I really have got to have some room to put some data on this so I'm leaving a little bit of room so that I can have some room to write over here. What you were told is that you were going to plot X versus Y. You were going to plot 2 milliliters of water, 4 milliliters, 6, 8, and 10. And then you were going to plot this versus the mass of that same amount of water. And so what we, what we did is we, we took a graduated cylinder Let's draw a little graduated cylinder here. There we go. And then we put two milliliters of water and we weighed it on the scale. Then we put four and then we put six and then eight and then 10. First though, we weighed that cylinder itself on the scale. And let's say just for sake of making this easy. Let's say that it was 25 grams. Let's say that. Let's say that it was 25 grams. So let's get some data that we can plot. Let's say that when we had two milliliters of water, when we had two, that the mass on the scale was 27 grams we subtract the mass of the graduated cylinder, 25. 27 minus 25 is equal to two. That would be grams. By the way, two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. On the bottom right here, this is volume in milliliters. This side over here, which you can't see very well, let me go to the top right here. This is mass in grams. So we need to, to label each side here. And I'm kind of running out of room over there at the right. So let me squeeze this just a little bit so you can see the mass. Very good. And let me see if I can focus it one more time. That doesn't really help that much, but that will be what we will get right now. So let's say that we brought the volume of water in the graduated cylinder up to four. This was, uh, we'll, we'll label this here in just a minute. And when we waited, it was 29. We subtract the mass of the cylinder. 29 minus 25 is equal to four. That would be four grams. When we had six milliliters, let's say that it was 31 grams, we would subtract 25 and we would get six. Let's say that when we had eight, we had 30, uh, three, 33 grams measured on the top loading scale. Subtract the weight 25, that would give us eight. And then when we had 10 milliliters, then it weighed 35. And we subtract the weight of the 
graduated cylinder, 25. 35 minus 25 is 10, 10 grams. So let's plot this data. If we had an x value of 2 and a y value of 2, then we would put a dot right about there. If we had 4 and 4, we would put a dot data point right about here. 6 and 6. All right. 8 and 8. As I said, we're not going to let perfection stand in the way of progress. This is kind of Kind of grimy, I get it. 10 and 10. So let's put a data point right about here. Remember that whenever we draw a best fit line, we're not connecting the dots. We are, in fact, going from the origin and we're just kind of a, drawing a line that, that goes through the data as well as we can. Let's do something like, let's do something like that. It's not too bad, is it? Well, if if the y-axis is grams and the uh, x-axis is milliliters, then if we can find the, ri the rise over the run, the slope of this line, we can find the density of water, can't we? So let's do that. Let's 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 call this data point here. Let's call this uh, data point two, and we'll call that data point one. And so I like to get the slope of the whole entire line as compared to just between two little segments. I think that's more representative. At least the data is roughly on the line anyway, so that's kind of easy to do. Let's say that the slope is equal to the rise over the run. And we're going to say that the rise is the, the y information. The run is the X information. And then we're going to kind of come over here and we're going to expand this. We, we, we basically say Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. That's how we find the slope. Well, if we call this data point 2 and this data point 1, then what is the Y value of this data point? It is 10, isn't it? All right, if this is data point one, what is the y value of that? It is two. All right, and so let's go to data point two and look at the x value, that is 10. And then let's go to uh, data point one and let's look at the x value, that is two. So we know that 10 minus two is eight. 10 minus 2 is 8. We have 8 divided by 8. So 8 divided by 8 would be what? That would be 1. And since we have grams over milliliters, we would say that the slope, no, well, the slope is 1. But let's just say that for now. We'll say the slope is 1. That is a good answer. But basically what we're doing is we're using this graph to determine the density of water. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. And we, when we divide that information that we have on this page, we get a value of one gram per milliliter. That's what we get. And that's what we report as the density of water equals one gram per milliliter. There you go, mates. Good job. Keep up the good work. Keep at it.